morning, our focus is on the KCSC results. And in studio with me, Professor Moses Oketch from the African Population and Health Research Center. He is also a senior research scientist there. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, I know you're highly decorated in this matter because you have a wealth of experience in it as well. So perhaps you can tell us just why you're sitting here this morning. Uh, because you've undergone the system, you've learned um, I, I mean, you, you've concentrated in this particular discipline for many years. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I think it's an interesting debate going on in the country, especially in the wake of uh, releasing of the KCSC results. Um, um, on the issue of ranking of schools, um, it's understandable uh, the ministry's position, uh, especially if it is to stem out malpractices uh, and also to uh, sort of reduce uh, unhealthy competition. Uh, but on the whole, I mean, ranking itself is not terribly the problem. I mean, sometimes you can fix the, you can try to find a solution, but you're not actually finding the right solution. Because ranking is done all over the world. I mean, universities are ranked all over the world. And even a number of Western societies still rank schools. And uh, that is how parents try to know uh, how the education system functions. But uh, that having been said, I, I completely understand uh, the challenges and the reasons why the ministry perhaps felt that it's better to go uh, by ranking the learners themselves rather than ranking schools. Uh, what we still don't know, whether by doing so, is there any research evidence to demonstrate that it has changed things. I mean, I still see, see jubilation. People still see uh, the competition between schools. We still see nearly the same schools that have been topping uh, remaining at top. So in some way, uh, the underlying issue has not been resolved. We still have ranking done differently uh, by the learner, but the learners are actually in typical schools. Uh, I think that uh, we should not lose ranking per se. I was listening to uh, the lecturer at Moore University who has uh, said that uh, we should look at a, a more uh, inclusive and com comprehensive way of uh, finding out uh, how schools contribute to society. I think that is good, but the challenge is that uh, we need to have an exam system, and the exam system is a way of holding schools and the education system to account. It is what uh, helps you to know whether your system is functioning or not. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing is that the examination is also one of the fairest ways in which uh, you can subject all the learners to a similar uh, scenario to find out what kind of learning outcomes they have achieved. The challenge is often one, that is there equality of opportunity? I mean, schools can never be equal, they can never be the same, society is not. Uh, uh, but is there equality of opportunity? And I mean, the point being raised is that if you rank schools and schools have got different outputs uh, and different inputs such that you've got some schools that have got best facilities, uh, best teachers and etc., then uh, you, you lose something because you don't give everybody uh, the equal opportunity that schools are supposed to give, and then you go and rank them at the end. I mean, that is uh, one of the issues I see with it. So I don't think scrapping ranking itself has provided the solution. I think it is not yet there. The solution is to ensure that there is equal opportunity for most children, uh, for them to experience the learning that they would like to have, that can produce for them the kind of outcomes they would like to have. Speaking of equal opportunities, now I know the exam is tailored in such a way that regardless of whether you had resources in your school, you're able to sit for this examination comfortably and be assessed for what you've learned in the four years. Uh, but is it a good mechanism of continuously assessing the child to find out if what they have learned in school can really be applied in the job market? Um, it's a good question. I mean, people have always asked, does education cause economic productivity or does education lead you to a particular job? There is a high correlation between, I mean, your level of education as well as productivity in the labor market because, I mean, if you're a good learner in the school, it's a potential that you'll be a good person in the labor market. Of course, people will argue about academic courses, vocational courses, etc. But one measure, one indicator, one thing that you can use to determine productivity of an individual is to look at their aptitude and that is through what they do in school. So. Uh, uh, whether education is academic or not, I mean, the exam is a very important element of any education system. My concern with the Kenyan education system is that the exam is too summative. Right. It is, you wait for four years uh, to know what's happening. Of course, uh, I know there is continuous assessment in schools and there are so many other things. And even if you take it back to primary level, you wait for eight years to know what is happening. I mean, there are continuous assessment in schools. There are mocks done within districts, etc. Those are things some have been scrapped. But eight years is such a long time. Uh, that if you've wasted years, eight years in school and you end up failing, it's so difficult to correct you. Right. But if we had a system of a standardized examination, which is done maybe much earlier, and then we are able to capture the competency areas where learners are not very good, and correct those in good time, 
then by the time they reach standard eight, I mean, the examination system will not simply be pro producing certificates, but producing competencies for a larger number of children. Right. So, I mean, one of the challenges, I think, with our education system, especially the summative examination, is that uh, it captures uh, the key competencies for a few learners. Why too late? And uh, there are a number of kids who are left out uh, because uh, they have not been captured in good time enough to be helped. So, I mean, that is my, my challenge with it. It's too summative. It is too much uh, towards the end of the education cycle rather than continuously at the beginning of the education cycle, in the middle, and sometimes towards the end. All right, we're talking about long-term issues here, and one of the ones which has really come out, especially with the release of exams, both KCSE and KCPE, is the number of people who are able to transit to the next level of education. This year, over 300,000 candidates sat for their KCSE examinations. How many of those will be accepted into uh, institutions of higher learning? We're talking about um, colleges, polytechnics, universities. I, I don't know, perhaps, um, I, I can tell you it's going to be less than 20%. <laughs> less obviously. than 20%. Possibly less than 20%. Because, I mean, if you look at the universities and the intake, and then you look at uh, the mid-level colleges, which most of them actually, unfortunately, have disappeared in some way, although some are still there, um, I see less than 20%. Less than right. Remember, in the whole of Africa, I mean, tertiary education itself is still just about 5% of the cohort. So very few people still go to tertiary education. Tertiary to include universities and non-university institutions. So we still have a very low proportion. If you compare to other countries that are middle level income, where we want to be in 2030, in terms of uh, the level of number of kids uh, or people who should have at least gone into tertiary. Those who pass, there are those who fail. But it's a huge chunk being left out. 80 plus percent or 70 percent, 70 plus percent. What happens to them? Does the government have programs for them that enable them to then um, be absorbed into the job market or is that the end of the line for them? Um, I mean, there are a number of things. There are those who will enter the labor market, uh, informal labor sector. Uh, I mean, with KSCC alone, I think they will not have professional training. And then there are those who will go to mid-level polytechnics and uh, other levels, uh, kinds of training, most of them in the urban areas and some same peri-urban peri, peri areas. But that will still be a smaller proportion. I mean, my bet is that a large number of those who complete uh, uh, high school uh, s somehow get wasted. Uh, I mean, they end up in the informal sector without any uh, training in terms of skills. I mean, some train themselves in, in, in Act 3 and many other things. Uh, so uh, the issue for me is that I think we still need to expand our education system. But let's not be disillusioned be illusioned that we can do it at university level. Even if you take the U.S., for example, mm -hmm. which uh, in the world people think to have a very large number of people going to tertiary education. I mean, uh, over 50% of those who go to tertiary education in the U.S. are in what is called community colleges, which are equivalent of what could have been our polytechnics. Uh, even if you look at uh, Europe, I mean, much of Europe, uh, a large number of them don't go to university per se. I mean, they've been trying to expand their higher education because they know it's important for their knowledge economies and competitiveness in the globe. But, I mean, Kenya is still at the bottom end. It's doing pretty well compared to other African countries. But, I mean, if we want to be where we, were, we, we, we want to be, I mean, we need to expand it further. But it won't be at the university. There has to be a mechanism in which we expand middle-level uh, colleges. But then with a caveat in the sense that we allow for what happens in the U.S., for example, which is uh, you can have community college and make transition uh, to the university. Mm -hmm. So you can actually start at a community college right. and end up in Harvard. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you didn't go to Harvard initially, you didn't qualify, but you go to a community college, and train and work hard, somehow there's a pathway that gets you through to the top university. I don't think we have that here per se, although I'm told Parallel Program offers a bit of that. But I mean, we haven't synchronized that pathway so that uh, uh, we don't have a pyramidal type of education where everybody thinks they have to get into university, yet there are very few places in the university. We should actually have a base that allows for gradual movement into university as people become mature students. All right, let's talk about the parallel program. There was talk that perhaps it should be scrapped altogether uh, to allow for more places, <coughs> excuse me, for more places for those who want to go into public universities. Do you think this is a good idea and how do you think that will impact um, the whole tertiary system? I mean, parallel program has served its purpose. It was experimental. I think it was good. Uh, I would ask JAB should be scrapped because, I mean, JAB is the problem, this joint admission board, mm -hmm. uh, because I don't, I don't know what it does. Uh, in the sense, in my view, it is very unfair for you to uh, select students to one particular public university. I mean, what should be happening is that students should be allowed to choose more than one public university, and they should be admitted to more than one. 
and then they can decide which one they want to go to, and the government should follow them with a loan there. So the loan should not be based on, uh, on the institution, it should follow the student where they want to go. And when you do that, it also implies that you get rid of the parallel program, and so you synchronize everything. Because it's not necessarily the case uh, that uh, uh, it's fair system, uh, although it, it's expanded education, that uh, you have got a minimum criteria for entry to university, and then you've got a restricted criteria for those who are sponsored by government. I mean, that's why it's called parallel, because it's not synchronized. Right. What they need, I mean, there's a very few countries in the developed world uh, run a parallel program. The other point I want to raise, I mean, Kenya cannot have all the universities treated equal in terms of government funding. I mean, the government has to decide. Uh, if we have got 15, 17 public universities, which ones are going to be our core research universities? Which ones are going to be teaching universities? The core research universities will have better funding. They will be slightly be more prestigious. Uh, but they will be expected to produce uh, more research and more patent rights and etc. I mean, there was a research on patents in Kenya, and they said Kenya is ranked number three, but it has only produced 260 something patents. South Africa is num ranked number one uh, with almost uh, 400 and something. So, although we are ranked number three, we are still doing very badly. Right. Yeah. And I think the reason is that we, we can't just uh, say we want people to go to university, get a degree. I mean, the university is a research institution, uh, it's not only a teaching en environment. Correct. We must foster teaching. Uh, but we also must foster research at the same time.